Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on any major podcast system, Amazon TV, and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont for today's show. I'm your host, Charlotte Kenyon, award-winning author, speaker, and actress. And today our guest is Christopher Leibig. Chris is a novelist and a criminal defense lawyer, and having penned several books, Chris has a knack for weaving a tale of good and evil. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you very much for having me, Charlotte. Oh, well, glad to have you. I was really excited when I read all of your bio and everything. It was interesting. Before we get into talking about your books, though, I'd like to know a little bit about your background and what you got into writing. I realize you're a criminal lawyer, and that really tells everyone what they need to know, but I'm sure there's some exciting things you could tell us. Well, you know, I was always into writing as a kid, you know, just creative writing, short stories and stuff. It's never anything I took that seriously. I just always did it. Um, probably, you know, in 2002, so quite a while ago, I actually started on the idea, instead of just writing stories for myself or my friends to try to write a novel, and then I just worked on it for a long time. Everything I write about at least has something to do with my business, which is defending people in court for criminal cases. Um, I started out as a public defender in Alexandria, Virginia. Did that for about six years, and I started my own law firm with some friends and various permutations of that. That's still what I do today. Um, the writing part, you know, I started out just thinking like most people probably would who are a defense attorney trying to write a novel that you're going to make it about a case, right? But everybody does that. So I started making it a little different than that. And so these most recent two books I have are a prequel and a sequel to each other. One of them is coming out April 1st. And even though they are about cases and they are about clients and about defense attorneys, the sort of interweaving point of both of them has a biblical point to it, not in a real religious sense, but sort of in a, a biblical history, sort of a second look at, at the Bible sort of thing. And a lot of the characters in it bring yeah. it out in the regular clients. Well, before we get into your newest books, I need to back up because I'm interested. You're, I think one of your first books was called Matanamo. Can yes. you tell us, about, uh, tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So back in 2009, I don't know if you remember this, but when Obama was running for office, he said he was going to close Guantanamo Bay, where they were housing the alleged 9-11 terrorists and other enemy combatants in Guantanamo Bay. When that was going on, leading up to that, various jurisdictions in the United States were bidding or, or wanting to have those inmates come to their jurisdiction because there, it would be lucrative, because there's sort of a private prison industry and, and, and things like that. Meanwhile, there were people lobbying against it, and this was a big press issue for about six months or so. One of the prisons that was going to do that for real was in Hardin, Montana, and that small town had built an empty prison, a, a prison, but then was unable to get a contract to, to house anyone. And so it was basically languishing, and this was a town going bankrupt, sort of on the cusp of the Native American reservation and everything. I just thought that was interesting. So the story is about that town and about what would happen if that town had won a contract to house some of the Guantanamo Bay prisoners. There's two parts to the story. One is the town, you know, it's a small town in America that's conservative and everything else. And the other part of it is from the point of view of someone that wants to come do harm to that town because of what they're doing. And so it interweaves those two stories. That's interesting. Very interesting. Now, uh, was that your first novel? My, well, my first novel I ever actually wrote, no one, I got, it didn't get published until way later. I'll tell you about that. But the first no novel I wrote that got published was called, it's now called The Black Rabbit. What that's about is a fiction, purely fictional account, but with a lot of real stuff in it about the trial of Saddam Hussein that happened in Iraq. Um, mm -hmm. The fictional story is that an American lawyer gets asked to go take part in that trial because he knows Arabic and some other mysterious reasons you find out later. So it tracks that trial, but there's, it's, all, it's a fictional track of the trial leading up to the end and ending in a 
similar but different way that the public never would have found out about. So that was my first novel that I really, I really liked and got into and, you know, nothing big happened with it, but I still think if someone checked it out someday, it could. It came it out kind of past 10, you know, it's kind of an old topic now. Yeah, but that, that that you know, there are people that do research on that 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 could yeah. come up. Now, let me ask you, and I know you know we'll go forward into your some of the, your new books, but do you use? You're a criminal lawyer. Do you use scenarios and maybe characteristics of some of your clients or people that you've met uh, as a criminal lawyer? Never one specific obvious person but most definitely that happens because there are scenarios and things that come up all the time repetitively that are interesting and anyone who's a defense attorney would recognize that in the book would obviously be able to see that i really do this because a lot of the characters are interesting they have their own quirks the legal cases are pretty realistic for a book that also has some fantasy in it the legal parts of it really would resonate with someone who understands how it really works. And I think sometimes if, depending on the person, you sometimes read a legal thriller and it's just simply not at all realistic on how things would work in a courtroom or that kind of thing. So I think I bring a lot of that to it. And in terms of just the way clients act who are under this stress and have various scenarios and personalities, but I mean, all of that, a lot of the, the defendants I portray in the book as being represented by my characters are usually not, like in some books, innocent of what they're charged with. And all of them yet are humanized as all people should be. And that despite the fact that these things may have happened, there's still a defense to be had. There's still something to do with the case. And the reader is supposed to still like those characters instead of having it just be, but is this going to be about whether someone's guilty? And if they are, it's bad. If they're not, it's good. And it's, you know, like it's very much not like that you sounds like i don't know if you've ever seen the movie the mercedes killer or whatever it has a lot and now that's i think based on a true story have you ever thought about your books being made into a movie well it's, i've thought about it a lot i actually think the almost mortal almost damned sort of series even though there's only two books in the series um, would be a great tv show because it has a lot of great characters. It has this fantastical element but that's not too crazy, but that's grounded in something people know about, which is the Bible, the book of Genesis, even things about Jesus. It's not the least bit of a religious fiction at all. So it would never fit under Christian fiction. It's even blasphemous, frankly, but it fits in a little bit, you know, with this series, the shows that people like about vampires or about a real like magical realism like a real show but that has a fantastical or paranormal twist but the characters are living in our real world and are real and are experiencing these things and i think that combined with the biblical realistic biblical analysis could really be a good show sounds it sounds interesting it sounds like we need to all kind of chit chat and see how we can get you you know get you headed in that direction because i know that we all know someone that knows someone <laughs> you know and get get you going on that well we're about to the end of this segment but i want to i want to entice people to stay tuned because we're going to talk about almost mortal which is which was your first book of this you know series of books and and in there like you say you you pit the good against evil and you use biblical you know biblical terms in it and so when we come back after our sponsors have a brief message i'm going to get chris to dive a lot deeper into almost mortal authors marketing guild a membership owned company where authors can learn how to better market and sell their books join us at authorsmarketingguild.com Factor 7, the newest thriller by author J.D. May will keep you turning the pages with mystery, betrayal, lies, and infidelity. Ripped from the headlines, Factor 7 follows two prominent doctors who uncover a clandestine plot to spread a bioweapon with a 98% mortality rate. Journey with them as they experience a world of murder, power, intrigue, and corruption, where it becomes deadly clear that exposing the truth is just as dangerous as the weapon they seek to expose. Do you send book sales to a company that takes most of your money? 
Do you want a bookstore that supports you? Want to earn more money from your book sales? Introducing a bookstore for indie authors and small press only. Earn up to 80% of your book sales and learn how to better market yourself. Join the 150 authors already signed up to earn their fair share at e4r.store. Hi, I'm Rox Berkey. I write the Enigma series with my co-author. We write as Brakefield and Berkey. Today we have 12 books in this series with The Enigma Threat being the newest release on January the 8th of 2021. It's an exciting book that goes to the next generation and we hope that you'll check it out and all the other books in the Enigma series. Thank you. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on any major podcast system, Amazon TV and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont for today's show. This is Charlotte Canyon, and it is my pleasure this evening to be speaking to Chris Chris, you've written several books, and we talked about a few of them, but you've got this new series that you're working on, and the first book of it was called Almost Mortal. Now, the title just intrigues me. Can you tell me, you know, a little bit about it and tell our, tell our listeners, you know, what can trigger them, why they want to go out and buy that book? Okay, well, the, the, book, the main character in the book is a defense attorney that lives in Virginia in modern times. Um, a few things you learn about him right away is that his mother died when he was young and he's never really known who his father is. And one other thing you learn about him right away is that he has a little bit of an ability to read minds, but nothing too crazy. Something a lot of people might think they have. So he gets a new client who happens to be a nun who's trying to get him to help a priest from the parish he grew up in when he was raised as a Catholic as a kid, which he's not at all now. And, you know, at that moment, it's kind of a normal plot line. There's always, you know, the whole thing with priests and confession has been done a hundred thousand times. But that's not what it's about. What it's about is the priest is worried he's going to be accused of harboring a serial killer for not turning the person over in confession. And they want Sam to try to head this off in some way. Mm -hmm. The character's name is Samson Young. But it turns out to be something very different. He starts reading an old journal about history. Um, the history of this person that's been supposedly confessing to being a serial killer. He also starts getting to know the nun better. Long story short, he sort of gets captured by this story. It takes place beginning back in the 50s with someone that the reader could be a lunatic who's killed people. It could just be a story. It could be completely made up. By the end of Almost Mortal, what happens is, is that Sam's client, who turns out to be the nun, is murdered in front of his face and in front of hundreds of witnesses because she ends up being a defendant for murder who's killed by someone in front of the courthouse. By the end of the book, you find out she's probably still alive, somehow didn't die. You then also realize by the end of that book that Sam's mother might be involved in the whole thing too. Sort of ends and during the book, Sam makes the commitment to this nun and sort of implicitly, although he doesn't believe it, he's going to help her sue God for what's happened to her as being whatever it is she is, stemming back from the Bible, which is basically descendants of fallen angels that come to earth that are written about in the book of Genesis. Now, the book ends there. What does Sam believe? You're not sure. He's still the same person, but he has witnessed all this stuff. Um, within can, I ask, you, yeah, can sure. I ask you something here real quick throw this in Chris it are you Sam when well, you're writing well it, uh, in the stories are similar the fast-paced sort of defense attorney life is similar I'm not nearly as cool as him or as good of an attorney <laughs> as him and I don't drink nearly as much because he's also a raging alcoholic which is part of the reason you're not quite sure what he's up to all the time with some of the things he's perceiving, but sort of. I mean, <laughs> I think almost everybody writes, quite often people write a book where you have to steal from your own life. But here's the thing though, as many of us know, your own life isn't interesting enough to pull it off. <laughs> you know? it, it's your alter ego, right? <laughs> right. 
<laughs> it would be your ultra ego. Uh, okay, now you've written Almost Mortal, and you said now, I believe you said April Almost Damned will be coming out, or is it out already? No, it's not out already. It's uh, You can pre-order it, and right now it's in the advanced review copy stage and working on marketing and stuff, but it comes out April 1st. Well, when you intention when you wrote Almost Mortal, did you know you were going to do a sequel and stop it there? Or while you were writing, did you realize, oh my gosh, this is more, I think I'm going to stop it here and then write another one? Here's exactly what happened. I really loved it, and I loved the, the research and learning about the Bible stuff and trying to blend it into the story. However, I might not have done it because I wasn't, I also would like to do something else. But what also happened is, it sold enough copies so that under the contract, I was entitled to have a sequel, and the publisher was enthusiastic about it, so I wanted to do it. But I'll tell you one thing that's interesting is that it kind of left a cliffhanger that I didn't quite know where to go with exactly. And I think that happens in, sometimes in a TV show. So it took, also I have a full-time job being a defense attorney, so it took me three and a half years to fit, finish it and to make it fit and make it right. And now I really love it. I think it, from beginning to end, it turns out perfectly. But when I first set off on it, I'm like, oh, man, I did not have a plan exactly for this. You know? and, and I think a lot of writers write that way. The, yeah. You know, the, actually, I believe a lot of characters, and probably Sam this way, he morphs. in. Oh, yeah. you didn't know what he was originally, but he has morphed yeah. into the character that he is today. Completely, and so many characters come back, and when you initially write that character, they're good, but you don't know that they're going to come back and be even more, you know, something like that. So I think it really fits together that way. Um, you know, in these books, even though they're thick and have a lot in them, these are the kind of books that somebody can read on an airplane in four hours. So it moves fast, but it, there's, it's, they're dense. So I think that could be good for sort of a popular novel. It's not a long intellectual tone, but it does have deep concept in it. Well, you know, you said you can read it on an airplane. Uh, I noticed, I read some of your reviews, and several people said it was a book you couldn't put down. Once you got into the characters and you got into the storyline, you know, you couldn't put it down. And I thought that was that was great, great, great reviews. I loved your reviews on your books. Thanks for saying that. And like, as somebody, this was the first book I had that had any success at all. And I, another thing I just noticed about it is I love getting, like, it got a couple awards and it got some good reviews, and that just makes you feel great. But when you occasionally see a review that's not great, it's kind of cool as an as an author that's finally getting some readers because you're like, oh wow, people are reading this that read the whole thing and they don't like it and they don't know me and they didn't do it for any reason. It's like out there, you know, when you get like, a, and then you're like, whoa, you know, instead of, if you have all five star ratings, you might think, well, are those all real? I'm like, no, they're real. If you have a few that like make criticisms or some people thought it was too out there or whatever they thought, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and it, I mean, and, and what you're saying is it makes it human. Yeah. Because we all know that not everybody's going to like every type of book or every, you know, even if they like that genre, they might like not like the style. So that, yeah. like you say, that makes it realistic and make, mm -hmm. you know, makes those, uh, those reviews more believable. Uh, and, and I think that's what is, you know, what you're trying to say. Well, in Almost Damned, you told us that um, you have this, uh, does the, is the nun in Almost Damned as well? Yes. It's not the beginning, but you know she has to come back in it because she's very central to the plot line. And there are more characters in Almost Damned that are like her that come into Sam's life. Um, I don't want to give away the end of it, but he needs to pursue his commitment to make this lawsuit against God to try to rectify what these descendants of the fallen angels think happened to them that was unfair. And for people who, you don't need to know any of this biblical stuff to like it. However, if you have a little bit of a grounding in things like angels that were in the Bible or, or little moments or, you know, 
things that happened at creation or very roughly things that happened with Jesus. It's good because at the end of that stuff comes into it too. And there actually is a lawsuit about some of these topics. Um, and so I think, and, you know, let me ask you this. Um, and it's just as out of my curiosity, you, you talk about the Bible and you talk about the fallen angels and everything. Will this turn off Christians or will atheists be turned off by it or will they both enjoy it? And ha did you think about that when you were writing it? There's, there's no way in my opinion that atheists or agnostic people or non-religious people would be turned off by it at all. Okay. It is conceivable that someone who's very devout about a literal reading of the Bible as taught could be turned off by it, to be honest because it has all the, it has the, the real, real history. It has things from non-biblical sources about the Hebrew Bible, all kinds of things. But if you are a very strong believer to the point of being offended about the doctrine as taught, I could see someone being offended. For ex an example of that is the Da Vinci Code. That book portrayed a spin on religious history that some people didn't like. It was wildly successful. It because, had yeah, yeah. Payment, but it had real analysis in it that not everyone would love. So yeah, bit. it had real basis. Well, Chris, we're going to take another break here and let our sponsors do their thing. Lone Star Festival, where Texas authors, artists, and creatives come together for a Texas size event. Join us on May 29th, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m at the Seguin Coliseum, Seguin, Texas, free for everyone. Produced by Texas Authors Institute of History, sponsored by B4R.Store, Authors Marketing Guild, and the City of Seguin. More information at lonestar.bookfestival.network. Hi, I'm Mel Greenberg, author of Running With Our Eyes Closed, book one in the Empty Nested series. To the world, Samantha has the perfect life. Three wonderful children, a loving husband, so she thought, and the life split between Dallas and Italy. When her youngest leaves for college, it all comes crashing down, forcing Samantha to re-examine everything. Over seven days in one of the most romantic countries in the world, Samantha faces the past she thought she'd overcome and begins to redefine her role as a woman, a wife, and a mother. Join us for the 6th Annual Authors Marketing Event in Granbury, Texas on July 23rd to the 25th, 2021, where authors share ideas and learn from the professionals over a two-day weekend. Receive your book marketing certification from the only organization in the world that has been doing it for five years, Authors Marketing Guild, a membership-based organization that supports authors from around the world. Learn more at ame.authorsmarketingguild.com. Sponsored by IndieLector.Store, a bookstore that pays authors their fair share. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on any major podcast system, Amazon TV, and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont for today's show. This is Charlotte Canyon, and we're speaking with Chris, and he has written some astounding books. And he's got a series going right now called Almost Mortal and Almost Damned. And I think everyone would enjoy reading it. Uh, just the previews that I've read about the angels and, and the trials and they feel like they've, they've been unjust. And it sounds very exciting to me. But, but Chris, we've only got a, you know, a little short while. So I'd like you to, you know, kind of give us a, a cliffhanger on your book and then kind of tell our people you know where they can get your books how they can get in contact with you and you know what you might be doing in the future well let's say you were a regular guy in the u.s you happen to be a defense attorney and you find out that your aunt and your mother probably rose from the dead that might make you have some thoughts about what your genes could be and start wondering about you know, things about yourself that you've always noticed that were a little odd. Add that to the fact that you've suddenly become a lawyer, try to institute a lawsuit about this whole question. How do you do it? Um, how do you even get that started? What are the issues? Who are you going to be arguing this in front of? And that is Sam's 
Phantom Young's challenge in Almost Damned. Almost Mortal gets you to that part where he has to make that choice and make that leap of faith and Almost Damned is how, to follow, is how he follows through on it. Um, the book will be available in hopefully like Almost Mortal in stores. It wasn't in every store in the U.S. It was in stores in Virginia and the D.C. area in 2016. It's on Amazon, Kohler Books, K-O-E-H-L-E-R and Virginia Beach Publisher. It's on Barnes & Noble, it's on Kobo, it's, you can read about it on Goodreads. It's very easy to find how to buy it. And um, I'm hoping it goes well on April 1st. Anybody who ever wants to reach out to me, my email is chris at chrislibiglaw.com. I'd love to hear feedback or any answer any questions about the book. Well, Chris, um, do you have a website? Did you mention the yeah, website? I have a website too. It's chrislibig.com. My last name is L-E-I-B-I-G, chrislibig.com. Well, Chris, this has been a pleasure. I would like you to, you know, one last thing is if someone was a beginning author or say you went to a college and um, had to speak to a literary group, you know, in a sentence or two, what would you tell them or how would you tell them to go about starting, you know, to write? I would say keep going no matter what. I mean, if you love it, it makes you feel good. Keep doing it. You have to have humility because it's really hard to get anywhere with it. But um, just keep doing it, even if you don't get any attention out of it at all at first. Um, write about what you're interested in. When you read back on it, if it makes you feel good, keep going. Um, I think a lot of people would probably give the same advice. It might even be cliche, but just don't give up. You know, if you really like it, keep doing it. And, and, and should they write about something they know or? I think I've only done, I've, well, my books usually have two things in them. One is something I know really well, which is being a criminal defense attorney and trying cases. But in most of them, there's also something I didn't know that I had to do a lot of research on. For example, with Montana, like you mentioned, the, the small town in my, Montana, I went there, I checked out the, I'm talking to people in the town about that whole issue, that kind of stuff, or the, the biblical research. I mean, I've been working on that for three years, no, more than that, five years, you know, so that, but that's fun, you know, you can do that part too. But I think what you, if you're writing about something like law, medical stuff, some profession that people know that a lot of readers are going to be familiar with, I do think it's hard to do if you don't know it, although mm -hmm. some writers can, can do that. Yeah, but do your research if you're going to add in some some yeah. facts and something like that. Well, Chris, this has been a pleasure. I've really enjoyed meeting you, and yes, definitely let's stay in touch. This is your host, Charlotte Canyon. Remember, a rose is like a book. You can't see its beauty until you look at it. But a book is like a rose. You won't know its full beauty until it's open. Until next time, stay safe. Bye for now. Thank you for watching the Indie Beacon shows produced by B. Allen Bourgeois for the Authors Marketing Guild, LLC, copyright 2021. Voice over by Randy James and B. Allen Bourgeois. If you would like to be a sponsor of this show, please reach out to us at info at authorsmarketingguild.com. If you'd like to be on the show, please complete the form at radio.authorsmarketingguild.com. Music is always rejoiced by Rambo of Ukraine.